Update. I found out that I wasn't my husband's first choice. Original post. My husband 29 and I 26. Met online three years ago and we got married last May. We have had a great relationship and our wedding day was the happiest day in my life. My husband is so good to me and he makes me feel so loved and appreciated. And I love him so much. But everything changed last Monday. I was on my sister-in-law's baby shower and when they didn't know I was listening. My mother-in-law, sister-in-law and sister-in-law's best friend were in the kitchen talking about my husband and I. The friend said she liked me a lot and my sister-in-law said she was happy to let Maddie go and settled with me and that she never thought this would happen. I pretended that I didn't hear them but I knew Maddie to be a close friend of my husband from college. He never mentioned that they were in a relationship. All I knew is that she moved to live in another city after graduation and that she couldn't attend our wedding. So since Monday, I have been pondering. I'm happy with him, but I wanted to know why he never mentioned anything about Maddie. So today, I did what any sensible wife would do, and I waited for him to go to work and started snooping around on his iPad. He doesn't know I know his code. I didn't even need to look for long. There it was. Tens, maybe hundreds of texts between them over a period of years. Before he met me and even after. From what I understood, he has asked her out many times and she has refused. Him telling her he would never love anyone like her and she oh stopped him with a wink emoji that says, I won't have you but please do keep trying. One of Maddie's texts, right before we got married, was about how she knew she would eventually end up with him. My husband texts back that he was getting married soon and that he was happy. She answered, you can always get a divorce. But my husband sent a cry laughing at winky emojis. She then texted, if you chose between the two of us, who would you chose? He answered, you only want me when I'm not available. She answered, shut up. I know you still love me. He didn't answer. The last exchange between them was three weeks ago. She told him that she's moving back home and that she missed him and wondered if they could meet. He said, of course he wanted to meet. She asked him, wouldn't your wife mind? Winky face. He answered, why should she? She, if she knew what I want to do to you, she should be worried actually. He, Stop teasing. It won't work. She. I'm not teasing. That poor woman won't stand a chance. She. I called you. Why didn't you pick up? He. We're having dinner. I will call you tomorrow. So that's all I could find. I haven't talked to him yet because I don't know how to approach the subject. I think there's definitely something between them. But I can't ask him because he would know that I went through his texts. I'm very hurt. I thought he loved me and that he was happy with me. I want to cry. I don't know what my next step should be. One moment I want to pretend I had no idea and wait for him to leave me. The next I want to run away and never come back. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. Send a screenshot with just this segment. You can always get a divorce. And my husband sends a cry laughing at winky emojis. With a message that says, you got your wish. Crying laughing at winky emojis. Seriously though, jokes aside, the fact that he hasn't even mentioned her to you makes me feel he won't ever be honest or loyal. The emojis killed me. What does it even mean? The problem is with women like her. I think it's interesting to her as long as he's married. The day I ask for divorce, is he gonna lose both? Of course. It is too stupid to know that. She likes having him on a hook to boost her ego. Your sister-in-law already knew this all along. Yep. Women can sense women who are like this a mile away. But try to tell men that and some will just say that women never understand her. Women are always jealous of her, etc. Nope. Women just know a shaded pygmy chick when we see one. Hey, OP. I-27 female have been in your position. Trust me, they don't change. And know what? When I finally got the courage to leave years later, after a lot of cheating slash manipulation on his part, I found the love of my life. I've never been happier. Point is, you don't have to stay. You will find happiness. Save yourself the time and all the extra heartache. Good luck. Definitely take screenshot and confront him. Do you know if he met up with this woman yet or if she moved back yet? I have been snooping on Araiji. She's moving back December 1st. I don't know if I should confront him now or wait until she moved here. I am kind of curious about what he would do if she's here. But I don't know if he cheats it would kill me. Although I feel like he already killed me. This whole comment section is a dumpster fire of bad advice. Talk to your freaking husband. Don't break stuff. Don't forward his text chain to everyone you know. And now for the first update. I don't believe the amount of people that were interested in my story. So many replies and upvotes that a post got locked. 
I knew I could find support online because I just couldn't be the only one with an indecisive douche for a husband. And I was not wrong. Before I continue, I need to say that I never expect to be my significant other's first love, and not even the last. I just expect to be the only one as long as he's chosen to be in my life, and I don't think that's too much to ask for. So please, people with he has lived before you comments, don't purposefully misinterpret what I'm saying. As I said in my last post, I have been pondering all week, and I just came to the conclusion that my slash our situation is either bad or worse. Bad if my husband is innocent of cheating and is just liking the attention of the one that he once was tormented by. That would explain his aloofness and his very short replies. He wants her attention but nothing more. Worse is that he's having an emotional affair, and is either scared of trusting her fully hence the vague text or is just waiting for her to move back before making a move. Either situation isn't something I want to live with. Whatever anyone says about his text, I thought he showed little to no respect for me. And no love at all. I want someone to love me even behind my back. Because it doesn't matter how much he shows me he loves me, it's what he doesn't show that matters. And please don't tell me they're friends. We're grown-ups. We don't put friends over spouses and family. It's not cool. So today I told him that I don't think it's working out for me and that I want a divorce. I thought about confrontation, but the outcome is the same, so why not save the drama? I don't care to know more about details about them, or maybe I care too much. He was very shocked and asked me if there was someone else and I said no. I have been thinking and this is not where I want to be in my life right now. He wanted to know more. Is it a question about having kids? Is it our living situation? He was mad, then sad, then mad again and left. He texted that he wanted to talk more when he got home. Maybe I will regret not confronting him and hearing his side of the story, but something broke inside me when I saw how he was in his texts. I don't view him the same way now and all I can think of now is to get out of this with my dignity intact. I can mourn what we had and cry later. Now for more advice before the final update. Tell him what you found. It's not about her winning. He should know his actions led to this outcome. He betrayed you and this is the consequence of his betrayal. I think you're doing yourself a disservice by not disclosing what you found. I absolutely agree. Definitely tell him so he knows why. Opie doesn't have to change her mind no matter what he says, but let him know. Exactly my thoughts. Otherwise, he would think Opie's divorcing him out of the blue. He needs to know that he is the reason why this is happening. I would just confront him still so he can live with regret. If you don't tell him the truth, I'm afraid he's going to just get with a friend and live guilt-free because he feels as if you wanted to end it. Then she'll feel as if she won. And she angers me more than you know. But I would feel more satisfied having them know karma is going to get them both. It bothers me when individuals have no conscience and do whatever they want without any consequences. Just my opinion doesn't mean you should follow it. I agree. I feel he needs to know that his actions have led to this, rather than it looking like Opie deciding they just aren't interested anymore. Doesn't mean it has to be a conversation. A simple, I have read XYZ, I don't need an explanation as it's clear enough. Please show me respect by not pushing this further. Do you think so? I think she would win if she knew I left him because of the flirting. Actually, I don't give a crap about her. What killed me was his actions and his texts back to her advances. I'm sure she won't want him now that he's single. He's coming home later and he will probably pester me to tell him more. Let's hope I don't cave. You need to tell him why more reasons than that. One, he will spin a narrative that you left him with no reason. You will look like the bad guy. And you will be the bad guy because he deserves to know why you're leaving. Two, he needs to be aware on how he messed up so that he can reflect on what he's done and take that lesson moving forward to his next relationship. Three, your kids might blame you or grow to resent you if they think you walked away from their dad without trying to fix things. Not saying to tell the kids the reason, but if everyone around them is saying mom divorced dad for no reason, that's gonna impact them. We don't have kids. We have been talking about one, etc. If we had kids, I would probably have handled it totally differently. I can't imagine altering my life so dramatically based on reading text messages and then not confronting the person to get an understanding of what I read. Honestly, kind of crazy. Good luck. There was a lot more text than what I put in my first post. A lot. And if you read them, you would think I didn't even exist. As I said, she was mostly the instigator, but he did text first a couple of times. Like the one on his bachelor party. 
He texted first, saying he was so sad she didn't come. He wanted to see her one last time before he entered the cage. She answered that she had a key to that cage. He answered, ha ha. Now for the final update. I have read everything my husband written, and it's basically the same stuff he has been texting me since yesterday. He is embarrassing, actually, to see him call my feelings her crazy and putting women in leagues. I can't believe he still thinks this is fixable. He wants us to start counseling because we can't break up over something this stupid. He doesn't want to cut Maddie out because it will only prove that he has feelings for her, and must therefore block her to move on when it's untrue, and that he wasn't going to meet her alone, but be one of the people who will help her move. Yes, husband is a doctor. Maddie's too. It doesn't mean he's smart though, because he isn't. I am a chef. One of the things Maddie, and probably many others, make sly remarks on. No, I haven't spoken nor do I intend to speak to her. Neither to tell her off or to tell her he's hers. I don't want anything to do with her. My problem is with my dear husband. I do think she's a pathetic, miserable, attention-seeking, home-wrecking ho. But I will keep that to myself because my husband is the one who wronged me. If she and my husband end up together, it's only logical because he's also a pathetic, miserable, attention-seeking home wrecker. A match made in heaven. I'm going to file for divorce and that's that. I'm so sorry for everything that has happened. And I'm sorry it was over a stupid thing. But I'm thankful that it happened sooner rather than later. Thank you. I'm sorry that you're going through this. It seems like there are some other issues that exist in your relationship. And this is the final straw. This is more than a silly text. It's disrespectful. And a trustworthy and you need both in a marriage. I hope you're doing okay. I'll leave a window that if you somehow work things out, that isn't bad either. Not encouraging you too. But I've ended relationships and had people say you dodged a bullet when I wasn't trying to dodge it. And I still care about the person. Stay strong. I still love him, but I love myself more. I posted something yesterday, but I think the fact that he's refusing to remove the antagonizing factor in all this is and will always be problematic. May you move forth in healing, in growth, and in true happiness. He still insists that if he cuts her off, she will think he has feelings for her. I don't know, but we talked a lot yesterday. I felt like he cared a lot about not giving her the idea that he had feelings for her. Why is it so important if he really doesn't care? Now for the last story. My wife is considering divorcing me after finding out the real reason we started dating. I love my wife very much and she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. However, our relationship started in what you can call a non-traditional way. First, some background information. My 34 male cousin, 35 male, and I have always had a friendly rivalry. Ever since we were children, we were always trying to one-up one another. And when it got to high school, it really amped up. If I bought a jacket, he would go out and buy a nicer jacket. If he bought the newest gaming system, I would purposely steal his games, even though I didn't own a Super Nintendo yet. Whenever I dated a girl or showed interest in a girl, he would swoop in and take her from me. It got so bad that we actually had a couple of physical altercations over it. Things came to a head when, long story short, he slept with my long-term crush. Let's call her Stacy. I vowed to get revenge. I noticed him talking to a girl from my class. Let's call her Jane, being all flirty towards her, spending a lot of time with her and so on. I didn't waste any time. I asked her out as soon as I could, and she said yes. Turns out she had a crush on me for a while, even though I did not find her remotely attractive. The date actually went really well. Turns out we shared a lot of the same interests. I kept dating her to rub it into my cousin because I noticed he was still talking to her between classes. Over time, I came to love Jane's personality and forgot the fact that I wasn't physically attracted to her. We dated all throughout university and we got married five years ago. I can't picture life without her. Now that COVID-19 restrictions have loosened up, we had Steven over for dinner. To my great surprise, Steven is currently dating Stacy. And it turns out they reconnected when they were both hired to the same company this summer. We were reminiscing about old times and our rivalry came up. We had all been drinking at that point. And I mentioned that in high school, Steven slept with Stacy because he knew that I had liked her. I then added, but the rivalry ended up working out for me. I asked Jane out as revenge because I knew you had a crush on her. And then we're married. I definitely should not have said this, as several people got upset when I revealed this information. Stacy was shocked that Steven had treated her like a prize and objectified her. 
Stephen revealed that he had never had a crush on Jane. They were just in the same math class and Jane was helping him with the schoolwork. He scoffed that Jane wasn't a prize after all, and I felt humiliated. I wasn't aware. I thought Jane was upstairs putting our daughters to sleep. She had been standing in the hallway behind me, listening into our whole conversation. I could see the horror in Stacy's face and realized that my wife was standing behind me, sobbing. Jane has always been very sensitive about not being one of the hot girls, and I had been the first boy to ever ask her out on a date. I started trying to apologize and explain that I love Jane very much now. I fell in love with her wonderful personality, her kindness, her intelligence, and so on. She didn't even listen to any of my heartfelt compliments and instead asked Steven and I to leave the house. Now Stacy and Steven have broken up, but he is blaming me. But even worse, my wife threatening to divorce me over this whole thing. She says our entire relationship was based on a lie, and she will never be able to look at me or our relationship in the same way. How can I convince her that my feelings for her might not have started out that way, but are very real now? I love this woman, and I love our marriage and the life we have built together. We have two young daughters, a three and one, and I don't want them to grow up in a broken home. What can I do to fix this? Let's go off the list. You haven't called her attractive once in the entire post. You let your cousin scoff and say she wasn't deprived and you didn't argue at all. You admitted out loud you never liked her and dated her for a while, while still not liking her. You forgot that you weren't attracted to her, not that you became attracted to her. You openly admit the other woman sitting in front of you guys was your original target. Yeah, you totally blew it. And it sounds like you did very little to soothe her. You really make it sound like you love her personality but aren't attracted to her, which is a deal breaker for most people. No one wants to, slash should ever hear that their spouse is with them in spite of their appearance. Like, damn man, I was coming in to say things change. Like you had an online to real life girlfriend I met in an online game who I only befriended to borrow an in-game item. But this is... awful. Yeah, I was also expecting the story where he wasn't attracted to her when they first dated but he is now. And this is... not that. Steven revealed that he had never had a crush on Jane. They were just in the same math class and Jane was helping him with his schoolwork. He scoffed that Jane wasn't a prize after all and I felt humiliated. Why did you feel humiliated? Because he went for a woman that his idiot cousin didn't actually like, of course. How embarrassing for him. 